Well, hello there. Thank you for joining us on day two of Translations, Seattle Trans Film Festival. It is I, your host today, Ava Davis, and I'm hosting Tea Time. And I am so very excited to bring on our guests for today. But first, well, two things first. First, I wanted to show you this very lovely tea towel that one of my producer friends got for me. It's got a little pride colors in it. Um, and then the second thing is, we would love to start the event with acknowledging that the Seattle Trans Film Festival and Three Dollar Bill Cinema operate on the unceded ancestral lands of the Duwamish, Suquamish, Tulalip, Muckleshoot, Stilagumish, and Coast Salish people. I personally am, come, am calling in from the ancestral lands of the Muscogee. It is important for us to know that the Duwamish people are still here, as well as people from indigenous territories across Turtle Island, aka North America. Support the Duwamish tribe directly by paying real rent via real rent, rent, <laughs> real rent duwamish.org. You can also find out whose land you're on by visiting native dash c native dot dash land dot ca. I can't read today. <laughs> you can also contribute to a number of land back initiatives that support people unrecognized or unsupported by the United States federal government or organizations that seek to aid displaced communities who identify as or are at the intersection of black, brown, indigenous, queer, and trans communities. All righty then. I think we are ready to get Tea time started, and I just used that site earlier to look up what lands I am on to make sure that I'm calling in from the right places. But what I would like to do now is go ahead and bring out our guests for today. And today we have Community Dad Catherine Carrion. Okay, did I do that right? Yes. Okay, um, yay. No. And then we have lead programmer Anto. A studio. Did I pronounce that right? I, so yes. Nice. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to read the bios real quickly and please forgive me again. Comunidad Catalio Carrion are queer, trans, non binary, indigenous, Apupion. Gotta go with it. Two spirit <laughs> work articulating generative spaces of reciprocity and relationality. They honor the land and their ancestors through ceremonies materialized in their audiovisual, textile, editorial, curatorial, and community practices. Comunidad Catalio Carrion resides divided between hmm, Picun Mapu, Kwa Ku, Ku Ya Suyu. I'm getting close there. Valparaiso region, Chile, and Cumea territory, San Diego, California. The group is currently comprised, composed of Antonio Catalio Araya, Constanza Catalio Araya, Malcu Catalio Araya, Alejandra Carrion Lira, and Manuel Carrion Lira. Mary Manuel Carrion Lira, Lira, he they is a Kunche, is that right? I'm, getting, I'm so sorry. Researcher, video artist, and curator from Kyoto, Chile. They are currently a Fulbright International Fellow studying in the PhD in Literature at the University of California, San Diego. Manuel holds an MA in Latin American Art. Antonio Catalio de Dem is a Mapuche writer, artist, and weaver from the Picun Mapu Kwa Kiriko Chile. Currently, they are currently a student at the PhD in Ethnic Studies at the University of California, San Diego. They hold a BA and MA in Chilean and Hispanic Literature from Pontif Pontificia Universidad Católica de Valparaiso. And finally, we have our lead programmer, Anto. Astudio, they them pronouns, is a filmmaker, perform performance artist, and curator from Santiago, Chile, based in Brooklyn, New York. 
Anto explores dynamic interconnections between the practice of embodiment and experimental cinema to create visual portraits of personal and political themes in the form of 16 millimeter film, video and performance. Anto has taught film production at Mass Art, Emerson College and Keene State College and is one of the founding members of the AgX Film Collective. I am going to go ahead and apologize to you all now for butchering everything. So please, I would love to learn the pronunci correct pronunciation of everything that I just butchered and also so that our audience can learn as well. If you don't mind, or we can continue. You did great, don't worry. I think it's- I can't. You did great, Eva. <laughs> I can't help but worry, but um, <laughs> have an exciting day ahead of us, I believe, as well as tea time. And I'm so excited to have you all on. How are y'all doing today? We're good, yeah. Um, really excited uh, for the second day of uh, translations. Um, I, I would also like to acknowledge uh, the land I live on right now. I'm uh, based in Brooklyn, New York, in Apehoki. Um, and yeah, I'm excited uh, that the festival started yesterday. Uh, we had an amazing screening with Simone Kakiruma about the work, and you know the reaction of the audience was uh, beautiful. Everyone loved the films, and I'm really looking forward for more films and more events today. Um, if you want, I can let you know what's happening today. Yes, please do tell us because I'm so terribly sad that I'm not there in person, especially with this fabulous get up. <laughs> um, yeah, we would love to have you here, Eva, so much. Uh, maybe one day we can do, you know, a live from from here, <laughs> from Seattle. Oh, fingers. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, today's events, Friday, May fifth, um, we have a tea time, obviously, every day from May fourth to the seventh at eleven a.m. Pacific time. Tea time with Ava Davis, Duchess of Grand Park. Um, at 4 p.m., uh, we have an industry panel uh, amplifying our voices with amazing guests uh, from Outfest, uh, Artless Media, uh, the Transgender Film Center, uh, and Daniel C. And they're going to be there talking about how to support trans voices in, in film. So it's going to be really exciting. Is that in person or virtual or both? That is in person at the Beacon. Yes. So sad, but I'm most excited <laughs> to hear about it. Um, Karen was one of my mentors when I was a Sundance fellow. No so, way. So very excited for you all to hear from. Karen Medina. Yeah, Karen Medina is one of our panelists. Um, Gabby Grossman and yeah, Russell Chaffer and Daniel C are going to be there. So yeah, super exciting that they're coming. Um, you know, uh, and then after that, we have the industry reception. Um, uh, the also reception. at the Beacon, RSVP. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then um, the award ceremony also in person. And uh, we're awarding Isabel Sandoval. Uh, we're so excited to give this award. It's the first time we're giving this award, the Trailblazer Award. Uh, to a filmmaker, and we wanted to give it to Isabel the first time because yes. her work is amazing, and she's amazing, and I'm so excited to be there with her. She's gonna be with us in person, uh, so it's like it's extremely exciting to have her. Um, and then the film starts uh, at 7 p.m. with uh, something you said last night, um, also in person at the Art Lodge Cinema. Um, then at 9 p.m., Kokomo City, also in person <laughs> oh. at the Art Lodge. <laughs> and um, uh, Kokomo City will have the short film Avocado Pit. And Avocado Pit is uh, an amazing short film um, that you can actually check also online. So you'll be able to watch that online. Um, and then the opening night party oh god <laughs> tonight at 11 p.m with Moscato sky um performing live for everyone um and yeah so it's gonna be an exciting night exciting day with so many events and obviously a vir virtual film access all day for all of you 
that you want to you know check the films you'll have all day to watch them until you know from you know started we started yesterday until may 7 you have time to watch all the films the amazing films that we have this year oh amazing and now manu and antu are you all in seattle right now or are you all elsewhere where are you calling in from uh, well we are here in chile actually in the unceded territory of the Mapuche, the Picunches. It's, it's a little bit laggy for us, I think, the connection, right? Mm. Yeah, so That's sorry okay, for we that. Can't it. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, we're yeah. here figuring out some visa stuff to go back <laughs> to finish <laughs> our studies. <laughs> but it's part of the experience. So, mm -hmm. yes. But we are and so I'm... glad and excited to be here. Sharing. sharing with both of you we're on it's Thank an honor you. for us I, it's an honor for me as well to be talking with you all and to hear about your work and i guess let's dive in it if you wouldn't mind telling the audience our listeners our tea party joiners the work that you do have in the festival well Man manu and antu are uh are jury members Yes. So they're part of uh, the documentary um, uh, shorts uh, jury that. award. Um, okay. And so a, a little bit of uh, background history of how I met Manu and Antu. Um, probably like three years ago, um, I encountered the work of Manu and Antu and program it as part of a, a film screening. And from there, I just you know fell in love with their work and what they do and their research. Um, the the research they, they have about you know being a pupillan and what it means to be a pupillan. Um, and it you know I felt like it was really important to have them be a part of the festival this year. And so they're yeah they're our jury members and they got to see some amazing work. So maybe they can talk about their work. I would love for you to talk about some of the work you do, uh, yes. Manu and Antu, and also maybe talk about you know what you thought about the films you watched as a jury. Yes, please. And also, can you pronounce the E word for me one more time? I want to hear it to make sure that I've got the pronunciation correct. Epupian. Epupian. Mm -hmm. Okay. And maybe you can talk about Manu and Antu what epupian is, or yes, please, yeah. please. <laughs> Well, my name is Antu or Antonio. Um, as you say at the beginning, I'm I'm a Mapuche writer. Um, so part of my 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 work is focused on um, searching or navigating the archives and trying to find some pieces of the history of my true spirit ancestors mm -hmm. in the Mapuche culture that it was a journey, a really, really um, hard, sometimes hard journey, like looking how missionaries, anthropologists, psychiatrists, how they name my ancestors in different directions that I would like to name, name them. So I spent many time doing this kind of work to for a personal uh, needs to have a, a history or like name my two spirit ancestor, but also for me it's a gift for the next generation uh, to to have the names of many of of our two spirit uh, people. Um, so Epupillan is a specific name that we recover and reclaim by some HIV AIDS activists, Mapuche and indigenous activists in Chile, and how they like protect these knowledges and live experiences today beyond the, the colonial, the, the, the beyond the, the archive, you know, like the archive was made by a colonial history. So I'm thinking about that right now. And as a community, 
um, we are working together with this specific experience about being a pupillan uh, in a literal translation uh, is like to spirit, but it's more complex and it's different depends of each context. Um, sometimes you could translate it as a two volcanoes that I really love. It's more poetic uh, and also make me think about the potency of what does it mean for me as a true spirit and non-binary Mapuche uh, being, uh, what does it mean connecting with the energy of being two volcanoes? Like, is destruction, I think volcanoes could be dragged all the heteropatriarchal history. And it's a huge, huge opportunity to me in terms of my artistic practice to engaging with uh, feeling as a tribal kingdom, with the destruction of this violence, but also with the creativity that have a volcano. When the lava touches the ocean, um, this, this sounds like this. It creates land. It creates lands. I don't know. It's for it's me. It's really creation through destruction. At yeah. the same time. Yeah. So to add on that, we connect with the Pupillan word specifically, specifically through the through Antus' work as a writer, uh, but also we acknowledge that that word comes from oral history. And storytelling. The storytelling is not in the archive. So that's also very important because uh, even in our own Mapuche historiography, we have had the chance to hear like, but that's not on the archive, so that does not exist, which is very interesting, sometimes painful, but at the same time is very, it's very telling of the situation that we are in as queer, trans, non-binary, not gender non-conforming or sacred gender peoples. Uh, it's not always welcoming for us, but we have found and we have built spaces for that. Mm -hmm. And the two volcanoes, it's also a reminder that we can connect with the non-human forces, with the environment, with the good relationships with the environment too. And I think that the two volcanoes as a poet idea of the Bupillan world, it's like what Antonio said, and, and it also connects with a specific with our specific land. Anto knows this. This country, this area of territory, it's marked by the Andes, by these huge mountains that are very young. So they're filled with volcanoes. We have a lot of volcanoes, especially at the south, center south of Chile mm -hmm. and Argentina. So this place is very telluric. It's very like it shakes a lot from time to time so i think it, that also gives a, a certain like characteristic or or certain spirit to our work that we try to honor always like sometimes our work is very it looks very radical but it's because we have that potency of like we know what it's like to feel destructive and creative at the same time because we have endured and we know that what we feel and what we want to communicate is connected to these other ancestors that we don't know their names, but we, we, we carry them with us. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's what we mean when we're talking about like ceremonial or ceremony. It's not so much as something that, it's, that we want to communicate our own practices, like cultural practices. That's something we protect even. It's about how can we connect through our work with beautiful and amazing people like the both of you that are here. And I think that's something that's very upfront in our work. Like we wanna connect really with people 
and do a slow but steady work because we want to become the elders that we didn't have. I, everything that the two of you all said was so resonant with me. Like I found myself reacting emotionally, but what really stuck out at me was the, the idea, the concept of sacred gender. Um, can you talk a little bit more about that? I'm really curious. Yeah, sacred gender, it's, it's been a, a way of that. I, I first read it about that here in North America, but there in North America, sorry. My mind is geographically elsewhere <laughs> or in many places. Uh, it's a way of referring not only to queer, trans, non-binary, to all these LGBTQ categories that are very useful for our uh, advancement and to be to, to advocate for ourselves and our communities. But in indigenous communities or native communities, uh, sometimes there's like even more spectrum than that. And by placing them under the sacred gender category, I feel like the, the communities from North America have strategically used that, that phrasing to protect themselves and protect them because heterosexuality and all of that has a historical root, like it was invented in the 19th century or even maybe later and, and as a, a way of like, as the only way of kinship, right? We've always had like relationships, I think, since we're group. every species, every person has relationships and creates a kinship, but it's a way of also calling out like heterosexuality is invention. It's also non natural. Nothing is natural. It's naturalized. It's like it was put in our heads and our minds and our bodies and our spirit to believe that that was the only path. But it's very new as a way of, of organizing our affection and even like pleasure. So I think say gender is a way of embracing all of these different and diverse and maybe even contradictory ways of understanding our expressions and our desires. And I think uh, it has a, a different temporality. Like when we say sacred, it's also for me, is related to uh, something circular. So when we say today that our gender is sacred, we say like, the past and the future are part of a, a wheel, a circle. So this is the way to bring today our ancestors that they, before colonization, they have a specific role and political role and a spiritual role in, in their communities. Uh, but for colonization process, uh, it could be a little bit impossible to return to this, uh, all of these knowledges. But thinking about the sacredness uh, in the indigenous context, I think it's a good question to, like as Manuel say, dismantle all of these notions that it's been naturalized. Uh, and also it's beautiful in terms of its generative, how just great people could be create beautiful uh, dialogues with trans, queer, and non-binary people and, LG, and all of the spectrum in terms of, it's a conversation between indigenous ways to understand gender, sexuality, pleasure, of love, and Western notions today. Uh, and how we create buildings, how we create like, no, not be bridges or mm -hmm. uh, dialogues or networks, you know, like kimchi. I find myself tearing up of all that because there, to me, 
there's always been something very profound and sacred and spiritual about being queer. And it's about this expression and living of life. And I do feel like so much of that has been lost in Western culture. So now I'm just so very curious about your work. Tell me more about how you, your work incorporates all of that. I also want to say that we're sharing at the bottom. You can see the <laughs> website, uh, the Vimeo of Catrileo Carrion, and you can watch all the films there because they have the, their films. They have their films available online, so people can access them. And each film, I have to say, is a capsule of all of this wonderful connections that they're making and weaving. Uh, between their experience um, and you know their connection with with the, their environment, and so I think uh, people should, I you know, recommend them to navigate this this uh, the work and and, and really um, you know uh, just uh, feel it, experience it, um, and yeah, please talk about it. <laughs> Well, where would you recommend people start off in watching your videos as kind of like an entry point into it? I think that's a fair starting point because I know after this, I'm going to be watching some things and I would love to know, which one should I start with? That's a very difficult question because <laughs> like it's like they're very dense in the sense that there's a lot of like cultural language and so I don't know. I, I, do you think there's one particular video? Yes, um, the Normal Ajin series is mm -hmm. like nine videos uh, that we create a web page um, in, in Toronto with Solin Shun, a, a curator. Uh, we could also share the link. Uh, the project uh, it was holding in the archive of, Ar archive of resistance. Uh, so there we have this like multimedia web page with nine videos about what does it mean for us, the act of don't forget. My Malayin means don't forget, we don't forget. Um, but also I think other like video essay work that we have is Kisungunegune uh, Pukiyan or uh, to spirit self-determination. And it was a video essay that we made like in different places. It's like performance, love letters that we wrote each other, not only between Manu and me, it's, only, it's also with our siblings because we are five. Um, we are family but also we are a community. Uh, all of our members of our community uh, are to spirit, but also some of them are trans, other um, lesbian or gender conforming. So yeah, this video, the, the or to spread self determination, it's, it's a really special. It's like writing letters, thinking about love, but through video. And it's like reading because we are weavers. So we are reading through video, I think. That is a really powerful imagery, the idea of weaving what you are weaving, um, just so much, so rich, everything. Um, I feel like I'm being overloaded with the senses. Um, let's pivot just a little bit to the documentaries that you have watched for translations and giving your general thoughts on what you've seen so far and the themes that you've seen emerge and what you hope to see. So many questions, I know. I just, I'm so wordy. Yeah. <laughs> we were we were part of the jury for documentary and transgender uh, shorts. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a very, very like, it was a journey emotionally, <laughs> physically, 
like watching 40 things, 40 videos, uh, and also with so many like important messages and techniques and like, and I think like I was, in, I mean, I'm not impressed. I was expecting, but I'm always happy to see it. Like, I think that all of them share something about like trying to use the medium, the camera, the video, the the sound to make it do what we need them to do. And I think most of them have that, all, all of the creators have that. You can feel, you can see that they wanna, like there's a, a connection with the media there that it's very interesting. Like none of them were like only a documentary, only an experimental or performance film. No, it was very transmedia, interdisciplinary, mm -hmm. and and I think that speaks about like the need of like connection, and also the need of like looking for new languages to communicate our experiences that we have endured a lot of invisibilization or silence or discrimination. So I think. I saw, I felt a flourishment of like, not only resistance, but joy. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the last thing I would say is that the pieces that were with, uh, along with Antonio and Paul, we agreed that the pieces that we wanted to give them like honors or like prices or whatever, it's the pieces that are connected to this spiritual, maybe longing or like like exactly what you say Eva, like something very emotionally sacred spiritual about being trans and queer and i think the films that are highlighted in the program now have that we felt like they were opening like a portal like mm -hmm. a gate to to communicate something that's very important and, and it's also not always very transparent very clear and and that's okay because we know that we cannot expose everything about ourselves to everybody so i think there's like this idea of negotiation between between refusing something and also showing something and i think our work connects directly with that practice because we are always since we're five we're always like discussing what do we want to show and why and how much of that we want to show because putting your body your face out there it's also a commitment and uh and it could be vulnerable for some of us for me uh i really love um the joy like how many of the, the videos that we watch, it's like talking about community, I think. And that images, that videos, like talking to me about that, the importance also remind me the importance of this festival, you know, like how all of these videos or many of these videos are like presenting the, the the importance of community and and many of them are really different uh, but at the same time as Manuel say like generously give language to name each positionality each each work uh, it's it's been really 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 beautiful and also I'm learning a lot watching yeah. the videos. So for me, it was an honor, like being into the, the, the process of looking at videos, really beautiful. Yeah. And it was also a challenge because it's like, you could see that so much love, so much mm -hmm. work behind each piece, that it's like, oh my God, what are we gonna do? Like, <laughs> everybody awards. <laughs> you, so get award and you get an award yeah. and you get an award and you get an award. So hard. Um, and what you just said, uh, Antu, about learning, watching films, I feel like uh, that's 
what happens to me when I watch your films. And I feel like I'm, you know, learning so much. And um, yeah, I, I really, I'm really thankful that you accepted to be part of the jury this year. Um, I, I really wanted you to watch and, and wanted people to also get some of your words and some of, you know, some of your feedback. Because I know that um, you uh, and Paul Merchan are, the three of you are, uh, I asked uh, for you to give them some words, right? For the, the people that you're highlighting in, in the programs. And, and yeah, can you talk a little bit about, um, uh, you know, the, the process of, of uh, writing for them and what you wanted to say to them, um, how you wanted to encourage them to, to continue making films? Yeah, I think the process of like the feedback, I wanted to highlight like at least what I like try to put out there is like offer them like words of encouragement, of course, but also trying to be very, I don't know if very, but trying to use like some, some of the technical words or some of the technical like aspects of films trying to like highlight that and also communicate what they made me feel in a way that it's not only personal, but like what they make, what, why are they receiving this feedback and why we think that they should be honored with a uh, um, special mention or a prize. Uh, I think that was my, like, that's what I had in mind, thinking what would I like to receive right too so i think it's i try to do it with reciprocity like you're offering this to me i can watch it so i thank you through these words and i think uh, we were debating on how technical and how like more like emotional the response should be but i think we got to a good place where we could combine like languages yeah and also i think uh for me uh it was a really good opportunity to to talking with paul uh yeah. we never met before but we started having this kind of conversation and sharing our feelings also about how the videos are like uh i don't know how to say like Give, give me emotions and thoughts. So it, the, the writing process, as Manuel say, like it was a, it was like a remind the generosity and the care that that this festival and I think all the communities that also been part or involved in this festival need to like as a feedback is like. Together with Paul and Manu, we grew up, we talking, we taking notes, but it's been like writing a small love letter, you know, like, I don't know how to say, but it's like, we are talking about relationality um, and how much important is relationality and good relations. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Um, Anto sent a message during the private chat, so I'll let them share it. But everything that you said, what resonated with me was when you mentioned community as an emergent theme throughout all of the documentaries that you watch, and also getting to learn. And I mean, that is the beautiful thing about documentaries is you get a very in-depth perspective, hopefully, from a documentary, and you get to just feel what someone else is going through. For me, that's what I love taking away from documentaries. But also again, to this community, this translation, the festival community and the space that it affords. And here's, I know my thoughts are all over the place, but it's not lost on me that we are all people of color sitting here as trans, non-binary, gender expansive persons. And I think more so probably for people of color than others, the importance of community 
and how that supports resilience. And I'm wondering if you noticed that as well throughout the documentaries that you watched. Definitely, definitely. Thank you for, for sharing that. I think this, this also resonates uh, with us a lot. What yeah. do you say? Yeah, I mean, it's no, there's no coincidence in that. It's about, right, the structures of, I would say, the continent, America, not only the, the country, but the whole continent. So to Island, Aviala, whatever you, however you want to name it, it's the, the structures of racism um, uh, are embedded differently, of course, in Latin America, uh, but they're still are. So, so yeah, I think it's no, it's no coincidence that they all, all of most of the videos highlight like people of colors, experiences, and how they relate or not to belonging to a community. Mm -hmm. So I think that's very important too. I think that uh, if you think about the theme of the festival, Trans Through Time, uh, when thinking about like what I'm gonna say, temporality, and if you think about the wheel, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's the wheel, <laughs> the spiral, the wheel. yeah. I think it's, it's, there's no, again, no coincidence why communities of color have the tools to make sense of what is happening today, right? And not only in the US, like, hate and like this advancement of these laws and these discourses of hate are everywhere. And, and I think that it's not our labor only, of course, but it's, but we hold, we hold some, some tools, we hold some knowledge that has been passed on maybe by some other members of our communities, or maybe we have invented it all by ourselves to survive but yeah, there's definitely a link, a very intense, beautiful and, and, and real bond between like communities of color, experience of persons of color and the, the trans and non-binary experience. I think queer experience too, of course. Yeah, I think that's definitely something to, to highlight. It's, Anto, would you like to join in in any of that conversation about the themes that emerged from translations and the documentary shown in the idea of community? Well, the the theme of community was very present in, uh, I would say, most of the films. Um, and it was interesting because when we were uh, putting the programs together, I felt like the you know, the, if, if, if we could like create a program that kind of gather all the, all the films would be a community program. Um, and I, it's the strongest, it's one of the strongest words that I've encountered uh, at the festival. Uh, the same with kinship that Antu and Manu were talking about um, and that they mentioned also um, earlier uh, in an article that was published in the Seattle Emerald. Uh, for people to check, that is a beautiful article. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, this idea of, of coming together, but also uh, questioning the places of belonging and um, questioning also the, the individuality as, um, uh, you know, POC community um, and how do we relate uh, with um, the land that we occupy and but also how do we connect with others. I think there's a lot of a lot of that. Um, the program that ties that bond maybe contains this very strongly um, in, in terms of how do we relate to one another? How do we relate to people that maybe are not part of our community? Um, how do we protect ourselves in creating our communities, in creating those safe spaces? Um, 
how do we return to those safe spaces after being in the world and having to encounter sometimes so many difficulties and people that don't understand us and um, a world that maybe, you know, antagonizes us in some way, uh, a world that maybe is can be aggressive at times. And how important it is to create those communities because then you return. There's a, there's this, uh, there's something about returning home. And I think we as queer, trans, non-binary, gender non-conforming to spirit, the Pupillan people, um, we need those spaces to return. Um, and from those places, once you're there, um, I, I feel all of this film somehow and the people who are working on the films, the, the, the performers, the actors, the, the um, directors, uh, writers um, who are part of the community uh, can, can tell you how important those spaces are because those are the spaces where we can create, right? When we can create our own stories, our own history and write our own history. Um, it's, uh, yeah, so, so you'll see, I feel like we, we created all these programs with the screening committee, but um, they're all interconnected uh, through, through this theme of, of uh, community kinship um, and uh, yeah I mean there is uh, the other program that maybe contains this a lot is the resistance resilience program um, and you know you you said it um, Ava and I really love but you said that uh, trans joy is resistance as well <laughs> and um, very much is. Like, <laughs> I want to be happy in spite of what you're doing it's a choice <laughs> Yes. Um, revenge. Yeah. Yes. I love revenge. <laughs> I'm a scorpion. I love good revenge. <laughs> so yeah, I just um, that program too has a community and people. Uh, uh, I you know I really want people to reach out to those uh, filmmakers and to the communities that they are showing because some of them are organizations, trans led organizations that are there for us, you know and there are there for people of color in in helping them to navigate through you know um, this world that can be sometimes so difficult and that can take away so many basic rights for people. So these are the spaces that are going to uh, preserve us and and help us uh, move through you know uh, a future that might be complicated. Uh, but you know I. I think by being together and by creating these connections, we can we can find that home and, and a place to return to. I agree so much with all of that. And all of this is just making me so terribly emotional. But I think that's one of the things I enjoy most about um, translations in the Seattle Trans Film Festival is it's hard being trans, queer, non-binary, gender expansive, and to have community and the importance of that in resilience and being able to be joyful in spite of the world around you and having people who understand that shared experience, but also as a producer of content and understanding these specific struggles as trans, queer, non-binary artists that we go through, it's so very important. And I hope that's the one takeaway that anyone coming to the festival, both in person and virtually take away is we're here, we're here and we're ready to embrace you. <laughs> so, uh, okay, um, I have no tissues handy, so, oh, no, no, that's empty. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, that was beautiful, thank you. Thank you both for sharing that. Yeah, thank you. You know thank what you. I'm thinking about, what does it mean, um, I think, um, that is really special what I what I hear from Antoine and Eva, like I like it and make me think a lot about that. Like it's an act of resilience, it's an act of transformation, like especially for queer, trans, non-binary, just spirit people, like right now uh, it's a moment to thinking about that beyond the normative ways or traditional ways is a moment to joy. And also I would like to 
thing. It's like my idea. Like it's like as we uh, we, we our community are, are thinking about within constellations, and I think that is the one of the purpose of this festival. You know, like it's like constellations. It's beautiful. It's, as you say, it's, it's expansive. It's infinite. Oh, God, I love that idea of constellations where we are connected, but we are unique and contained in, but expanding all of that. And we're all stars. In what? We're all stars. We and are all stars. stars. Look, I believe that we are divine beings, and I take very liberally from stardust in the idea that we have just shot down and we've appeared on Earth, and we are stars somehow walking amongst Earth. Again, that sacred gender. <laughs> All righty. So we have two things before we wrap up for today. The first is just a little game that I want to play. I play with everyone who comes on Tea Time. And Anto, I guess you can either repeat your answers or you can come up with new ones or you can abstain. <laughs> Whatever you like to do. Maybe, maybe I'll do what Max did and come up with new ones. <laughs> but Max was too good at it, obviously. <laughs> But this is a very simple game. It's just two different choices. I will give you two choices. For instance, like, I don't know, zero or one, just for example. Um, and then after we play this game, we shall make, a, are we allowed to announce what you vote in the chat that we're going to do for Sunday? Yes. And, okay. and we, we can announce that. Yeah. You can announce okay. that. Yes. <laughs> so we will play this game. We will make that announcement and and will tell us what to look forward to again tonight so you don't miss it. But on with the game. Um, all right, so I'm going to give you two choices and you are just going to choose one of them. So for example, well, this is not an example. This is one of the choices. Um, tea or coffee? Wait, I just want to say, why don't you do it with just Manu and, and Andu since I did it yesterday? Yeah. We can do that. That's what yeah. I was also thinking, but yes. words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Coffee. Coffee. I will say tea. Tea. Oh, okay. Love diametrically opposed people. Um, mountain or beach? Y'all are both right there where the two beach. join together. Beach. beach. Okay. Okay. I heard the water's quite cold in Chile. Um, yes, it is. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, okay. City or countryside? Countryside. I think city. Ooh, love it. Love it. I love both to be fair. I'm older. I want to move to the countryside soon. <laughs> Um, I'm done with cities. <laughs> it's intense, but yeah. I like it. <laughs> I love cities too, but yeah. I totally get it. Cities are strange little creatures, big creatures, really. Yeah. Um, paper or plastic? Paper. Mm. Paper. Paper. <laughs> okay, love it. Environmentally friendly there. Um, New York. Or LA. We live in California now, but I have to say New York. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think I have better experiences in, in New York than LA. My personal experiences. I I personally um I prefer New York. We'll just leave it to that. New York is my place to be. Um, <laughs> then you all have to go to New York. We all have to get together. Yeah. <laughs> I am really hoping to be there in New York. I mean, in November. Wow. Too many N words in my head. <laughs> um, <laughs> domestic or international? Domestic. Yeah, domestic. But which domestic? What does domestic mean to you? For me, it means um, home, so Antonio. Um, for me, um, it's like um, cooking in the house, in home, my bed, you know, like 
my clans, all of that. Yeah. My partner and, and I tell space. each other all the time, you know, we love each other, but we love our bed more. Um, if it came between the partner and the bed, we would both choose the bed. So there's that. <laughs> Okay, now, I want both of y'all to pick your most favorite place in all the world, real or imagined, not just the world, but the universe, really. Um, anywhere. Both of you just pick one place. I'm thinking, sorry. No, you're fine. You're totally fine. And I will vamp in the meantime while you think. Um, personally, I love rolling green hills, but that's... You know, they're so verdant and green and rolling and, I don't know, so pastoral. I guess I do like the countryside. I just don't know. Um, but I also love walking in a good city. Mm, I will say the Pacific Ocean uh, because I live in different yeah. places close to the, the, the Pacific Ocean. And I have a, a connection with oceans, I think. So each part like close to this body of water for me is the best. Yeah, I... Even though it's cold. I think... Yeah, I think... I think the, the, the mountains, the Andes Mountains, oh. it's very important for me. Not to live there, but to have them as references, as a reference for my like visual. Because I, I, I've always lived looking at the mountains mm -hmm. and I always knew that that's where the mountains are. So the beach is the other way because Chile is very thin. So you always have to have mountains. So I think that somewhere like in a valley, I think I'm being a cliche because I grew up like that. So I'm thinking about maybe my childhood. <laughs> no, but I, I wouldn't go back to that. <laughs> but uh, uh, let's imagine like a very queer, trans, crazy, and beautiful like community that has its own rules. And we have the mountains and then the sea a couple hours. And, okay. Uh, well. This goes into my next choices, and it's actually more than two on this one. And I can repeat them if necessary, because no one can really hold all those thoughts in one's head. But you're just going to pick one, each of you. Let's see if I can do this. Barony, March, County, Duchy, Principality, or Queerdom. I know, it's just like so many choices. What did she even just say? We just don't know. Can you repeat it? I sure can. Barony, March, County, Duchy, Principality, or Queerdom. Oh, thank you so much, Maddie. Thank you. Oh, Maddie has written them. I mean, <laughs> thank God send. A Queerdom. Queerdom. Queerdom, definitely. <laughs> yeah. I like it. I'm not sure about the translation in Spanish, but I like it. I would be more into a queer sub, not a queerdom. Oh. <laughs> Wait, a queer what? Sub. I'm like here for sub. It. I am here for it. Okay, well then I dub you both. The regions of the queer south did I say that right? Yeah. Of the Pacific and the mountains, the Andes Mountains. I love that. And make it as queer as possible, please. We can all use yes. some queer around the world. Um, it has been lovely to chat with the both of you. And you. I, I feel like I just spent the entire time crying because I was so emotionally moved with everything that you were sharing from sacred gender to community to everything and i cannot wait to check out your work on vimeo and the link is down below and also follow them on instagram and please 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 check out their work but before we go anto i'm going to let you announce the surprise and also take us away with what people can expect tonight okay so 
we're announcing the awards for the filmmakers on Sunday for tea time. <laughs> so yeah, that's when we are announcing everyone. Uh, so please tune Sunday at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, and yeah, you'll, you'll find out who gets the awards and gets the special mentions and everything. Um, and for today, yes, I can let you know again, remind you, um, well, remind you that tea time is happening every day from May 4th to the 7th at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, we'll have the industry panel today at 4 p.m. at the Beacon Cinema in person industry reception. Following up at 5 p.m., also at the Beacon Cinema in person, award ceremony for Isabel Sandoval. We're honoring the work of Isabel um, uh, at 6 p.m. at the Art Lodge Cinema, um, also in person. Opening night film, something you said last night at 7 p.m. at Art Lodge Cinema. Also at Art Lodge Cinema, we'll have Kokomo City at 9 p.m. in person. Um, and tonight is the opening night party with Moscato Sky performing live for everyone, also in person at the uh, Royal Room um, in um, Columbia City, Seattle. And just remind you all that uh, from May 4th to the 7th, you'll have access to all the films that are available online. Absolutely wonderful. Well, thank you all so much for tuning in for Tea Time with Translation Seattle Trans Film Festival. And again, please check out all the programming and build community. That's really what this festival is about. And as queer people, now more than ever, we need to make sure that our community ties are strong. And hopefully you will continue to join us for the rest of the weekend as we have Tea Time, including announcements. Thank you again to our guests for joining us. And yeah, Thank you. it's been fun. Oh.